Representative Tom Conroy, and he's running for state treasurer. And he um, just, I know he was stuck in traffic, as I told you, and he pushed and he was able to get down here, so thank you. I know all of you have fought traffic to get here. Um, Representative Conroy represents the 13th um, district in Middlesex, and he's done so since 2006 when he first ran um, for office. Prior to that, um, in the, the right out of college, he worked on um, issues um, in Washington, D.C. of national security, foreign policy. Um, in the early to mid-1990s, he worked with various refugee populations, um, serving um, refugees, and, and through that experience, recognized that um, access to employment was an important piece of people rising up out of poverty having options available. He then worked um, for quite a while in the private sector, helping businesses with job growth, um, excuse me, with the growth of their business and job creation. And as state rep, he has uh, worked on issues of healthcare financing, um, and he's also recently been working on um, the minimum, the raising the minimum uh, wage that we talked about earlier. So without further ado, Representative Tom Conner. That was a great intro, so thank you very much and did cover uh, some, some neat ground. It's great to be back here on the Cape and in Falmouth specifically. Um, you know, I, I started a journey about three years ago visiting towns and cities all throughout this state, and I've been to most of them. There's 351, as you know, cities and towns around, and uh, I, I've gone over half. And it's really, to me, about listening and learning and understanding the day-to-day -day challenges that folks are facing and how I, as a public servant, uh, may be able to help uh, and make a difference. And that's really why I'm running for treasurer. You know, one of the key takeaways that I learned was that the defining issue of our, of our time right now, as President Obama has stated, is this issue of income inequality and the lack of economic mobility for so large of a swath of our population. People who are not making enough money to put food on the table, put a roof over their heads, pay for their own health care, uh, and aspire to a career in education and jobs and skill training that will get them uh, into the middle class, which is, as we all know, is hollowing out. And uh, I want to use my business background, my <coughs> economics, my finance experience and expertise. Uh, I want to use the, what I have learned uh, from management consulting and as a public servant, uh, someone who knows how Washington works, because I used to work on Capitol Hill, someone who knew, knows how Beacon Hill works, someone who understands the challenges, for example, that you're facing right here in Falmouth, and put all of those, uh, all of those pieces of my background together in the treasurer's office to pull the various levers of authority to expand education opportunities, job opportunities, and opportunities in a variety of different areas so that people can get on that path towards success, move up in the economic stratus, and move uh, their family uh, to a point where they can live a quality of life that I think we all uh, believe that we deserve right now. So um, I want to tell you a little bit about who I am, and, and then we'll circle back uh, to part of my background and what I really want to uh, do as treasurer. Um, as Megan said, I'm, I'm a state rep. I've been a state rep for about seven years. I'm in my eighth year now. Um, I uh, live in Wayland. I'm privileged to represent uh, Wayland, parts of Framingham, Marlboro, and Sudbury, right in that part of that Metro West uh, region, just west of Boston. Um, my wife uh, used to work uh, in the Clinton administration down in Washington. That's where we first met. Um, she was working on Capitol Hill for uh, George Mitchell, the Senate Majority Leader, uh, and I uh, was working for Barbara Mikulski, great Democrat, helped her get into the United States Senate, uh, actually, it's, uh, uh, way back when, uh, almost 30 years ago, and it's great to see that she's the, the dean of the Women's Senate uh, right now. When she, she elected, there were only two. She was the second senator. Um, there are now 20 female senators, which is um, something I'm really proud of. Um, I have four daughters. Um, and if there is, and three of them happen to be triplets, so if there's one thing you may remember <laughs> is that uh, my name is Tom Conroy, I have triplets, and I'm running for treasure. So if alliteration works for you, well then keep that in mind, Tom, triplets, treasure, and, and maybe we can, uh, we can build from there. I, uh, I, I uh, grew up 
um, in New England and uh, very partial to, uh, to Massachusetts. Um, my, my folks uh, did not have a lot of money when I grew up. They, uh, they actually uh, had quite a bit of struggles. When I was two years old, for example, um, I was quite ill. And my mom knew she needed to take me to the hospital. My dad was working a double shift at work. And my mother was looking for money for the subway. And she couldn't find it in the house because there was no money in the house. She couldn't find a quarter because that's what it cost back then. And uh, she needed to go begging. She started banging on the doors of the apartment building where we were. And she got to about the fifth door and somebody finally opened up and uh, said, Tish, you know, what's, what's the problem? What can I do? How can I help? And, my mother explained the situation. She went back and grabbed her pocketbook and read up and, and gave my mother a five dollar bill. And my um, my mother burst into tears because uh, she had not seen a five dollar bill in about three or four months. And about three years later, my dad came back after serving a year in Vietnam. Came back to a house that he had never seen, a little six room ranch that was sort of falling apart. It, had, it was mortgaged to the hilt. It's filled with five boys under the age of eight bouncing off the walls and a wife who for 13 months had been a single parent trying to deal with us. And believe me, Michael, Peter, Thomas, James, and Kevin, we were, we were trouble. Um, my dad had no income, no job, and no savings. But through hard work and honesty and integrity and diligence and some skills that he learned from schooling, and some help from neighbors, and a belief that it is in giving that we receive. They succeeded. And they gave me the opportunity to have uh, an education in an Ivy League school by taking out a lot of student loans. And giving me uh, that, that next step, that ability to go on and pay for graduate school uh, in business. I got a master's degree in international economics, one in finance, and go into the private sector. And I spent 16 years there in management consulting and in the financial services industry. And if you think about what the treasurer does in Massachusetts in terms of managing the, the $56 billion pension fund and deciding which companies to invest in, the work that I did as a management consulting and as in the financial services industry is very relevant to that. Because I saw best practices, as Juliet mentioned, in the private sector and how they could be applied to the public sector. In fact, some of the work I did was with state agencies all around the, uh, the country. North Carolina, Tennessee, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, New York, uh, Connecticut. We were trying to manage the state's finances better and bring in more of what's called non-tax <coughs> revenue in order to solve problems that the states were facing and grow their budget pie so that they could hire, for example, more social workers to take care of foster children rewards of the state and not able to uh, live in a home safely. And we were able to generate that non-tax revenue and of course that means that you don't need to raise taxes and you don't need to cut benefits and public assistance to people. It is a great solution. I want to bring some of those ideas to the role of treasurer and look all across the state complex in the executive branch and bring some of the creativity that I've learned in the private sector to managing our state finances more effectively and more efficiently so that we can grow that pie and invest in education and job creation and workforce training and skills development and clean energy development and fixing our broken infrastructure and offering more student loans to kids who are aspiring to get to college, community college, state college, and into the science, technology, engineering, and math fields so that we can have a robust economy going forward, but more importantly, people can have more opportunities to get into good jobs, with good wages. What I learned through all of my experience and uh, is that the best social safety net program for anyone, anywhere, is a good job with good wages and decent benefits. And I, I want to get up to the level of a statewide office so that I can work every single day to fight for economic justice, more economic mobility uh, for folks, addressing this issue of income inequality, and giving people more opportunities and more chance. As you may know, the Treasurer's Office has several levers to pull. Uh, I mentioned uh, education. So the school building authority is under the auspices of the Treasurer's Office. And uh, right now it focuses on K-12. But who here 
thinks that we should have universal early education in Massachusetts. Right? Two problems. We don't have enough money, and we have no place to teach the kids. There's no buildings. There's no classrooms. Right? Treasure, if I'm your next treasurer, I want to start building classrooms for pre-K education so the kids can all enter the K-12 system uh, on an equal playing field and an equal, having an equal opportunity for success. Student loans is also a portfolio under the treasurer's office. I want to expand that dramatically because I want to give those kids uh, uh, who are aspiring, honest, hardworking students with good grades and good test scores, give them the opportunity to get into those middle class jobs right here in Massachusetts. I want to use the treasurer's office uh, to invest more of our short-term securities and our cash in local banks so that those local banks can lend to local businesses, so that those local businesses can hire local residents and put more people back to work, address our unemployment uh, situation, which is now higher than the national average, which is quite disturbing. Um, this is some of the stuff that I want to do as your next treasurer, and I'm going to continue the fight on uh, the issue of the minimum wage. as. Uh, Megan mentioned, I happen to be the chairman of the Labor and Workforce Development Committee. And I am responsible for reporting out to that committee over the next uh, month or two a minimum wage bill that I hope uh, by the end of 2014, when we finish this whole process, uh, gets us to a point where we have the highest minimum wage in the United States of America. Because no one in this state and no one across this country should be working full time and living in poverty. But that's what we have right now. And I want to change that. And if you help me become the next treasurer, I will continue to fight every day in that role to address this issue of income inequality, economic justice. I will fight for the minimum wage. I will use these different levers of authority in the treasurer's office to give people more opportunity. I need your hand. I need to have your hand to lift me up from a state representation, which I love dearly. I'm a public servant through and through. I am here for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and the residents. I need your helping hand to lift me up to that next level, that statewide level in the treasurer's office. It is exactly the right role for me. It's the right time. I believe I'm the most qualified and the right candidate to do it. But if you give me that, that hand up, I will be able to get into that role and give the hand up to those who need it the most, the disadvantaged, the downtrodden, the folks who are trying desperately to get to a point in life where they can succeed and have a fair shot at doing it. That's why I'm running for treasurer. Thank you so much for uh, listening, and I'm happy to be here. What do you think Steve Grossman has done right as treasurer, and what do you think he has done wrong? Well, it's, it's sort of easy for me to think about what he's done right, because I actually was very interested in running for the treasurer's office in 2009. And when Tim Kale, as you may recall, was thinking about running for governor, and, uh, people started encouraging me to run. Tom, you got the great background, you've got all the skills, you've got, I forgot uh, my education, well, I talked about my education, you've got the education, the private sector experience, the public sector, you're perfect. But there's this guy, Steve Grossman, who's, who's running too, so you better go talk to him. So, long story short, Steve and I had a couple of meetings, and at the last one, I said, I'm not running, you go ahead. He said, well, do you have any ideas? And I said, yeah, well, I have this one idea that we've got $8 billion of cash parked um, at various mutual funds and Swiss bank accounts. Um, why aren't we investing more of that in our local banks? Because the multiplier effect, if you put a billion dollars of that investment into local banks and shore up their balance sheets, that has a multiplier effect on the economy of eight times a billion dollars. So you will grow the gross state product by eight billion dollars if you do that. And that's one of my goals. So Steve has done this. He has started, and it's great, he's uh, set up arrangements with about 45 banks and he's invested 320 million dollars. I want to get to a good I want to get to 100 banks, right? Well, I was just down in Springfield. Um, and it's great to be here in the Cape, by the way. This is only the sixth day of my formal campaign. We just launched last Thursday. So uh, if, if that is an indication of how important I think the Cape is, I think you can take that to heart. Because uh, I've got a lot of friends down here, state reps and, and otherwise. And uh, it, it is a beautiful part of the state. So um, I want to make sure that places like where I was in Fall River, in New Bedford, in Springfield, in Holyoke, that have uh, credit crunches and problems with folks in small businesses trying to get access to capital so that they can expand those businesses and hire new jobs. Uh, that's the way to do it through this investment in small banks. What has Steve not done uh, enough? Well, I think he's doing a, a good job. I mean, I, I don't look at it so much as 
anything Steve's done wrong. I want to be more creative, more dynamic, more expansive. You know, I want to do the pre-K building program. I want to expand the, the small student loan program right now and increase it a hundredfold. And I've got ideas from my private sector experience that I want to bring to bear to raise new capital and basically uh, through non-tax revenue, uh, raise more money, expand that pie so that we can create more opportunity for more people. So that's, those are the kind of things that I want to do. It's just more of what um, the treasurer has been doing. Yes, ma'am. Um, two things. One, putting your other hat on, the one of state representative. Yes. All, a lot of us are very interested in this minimum wage issue. Do yes. you have any idea when it's going to come up for a vote? And do you think that the uh, speaker is going to allow this to please the House, the Senate bill to come up? So it's a great question. So where are we in the minimum wage? So it should come up in the next uh, month or two. Um, and that's when we'll have a vote. And then we'll need to reconcile if it's different from what the Senate is. And this will play out over the course, that's why I said it will play out over the course of 2014. I'm not exactly sure how that all unfolds. But my goal in this process is to try to ensure, as I said, that we get the highest possible minimum wage we can. Now, I happen to be more progressive uh, and, and quite frankly more liberal uh, and more interested in uh, increasing the minimum wage as high as we possibly can than some of the leadership people uh, on the House side. No, no uh, offense to them. I mean, some of the districts that they represent are, you know, fairly conservative. Um, I'm trying to work on the inside to, to get the leadership to buy into a high possible wage. I'm trying to work with the Progressive Caucus, of which I'm a member, to give them the facts and the ideas to uh, to put it all together in a way that um, gets us towards uh, the highest. That's, that's uh, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, what is the highest? What, how right you? now, well, California passed a law that is going to get them to 10 bucks an hour, I believe, in 2015. So what do you think we could get? Any, any ideas? Uh, I think we can go higher than that. Really? Yeah, I do. Yes? There's another piece to it. Um, someone who wanted to be treasurer and ended up um, losing out to the infamous Tim the Treasurer yes. uh, had an idea that treasurers could get together, state treasurers could get together and with uh, nonprofits yes. and do some work in terms of their stock ownership oh, and perfect. voting yes. in a way, yes. you know, working yes. together to yes. maybe clean up some of these corporations a little bit. I'm wondering what that is. A, that. You, that you, you just uh, articulate, what's your name, ma'am? <laughs> <laughs> because you just articulated part of my plan. Yeah. So uh, we should we should continue to talk. Is it, no, it wasn't a platform. I just liked that a lot when he had that idea. So, anybody aware that there's sort of a discussion going on yeah. in Hill around divestment of fossil fuels mm -hmm. and the pension fund and all that kind of stuff? So it's a very important, relevant issue. And I know folks care a lot about clean energy here and alternative uh, energy sources. And, I, and and don't let me leave without talking about my carbon tax bill uh, that that I introduced, first one in Massachusetts ever, and. Um, uh, I think that's a great way to raise revenue and address the climate change issue at the same time. The investment of fossil fuels in the pension fund is obviously related because it, it's trying to address the same problem, which is uh, human-induced uh, uh, climate change. So um, there's two issues there. I, I, my heart tells me, yeah, I'd love to do it, divest. Um, the treasure hat on me says, well, that may compromise our ability to make the pension fund solvent. We don't want to hurt state and municipal employees. Um, so that's something that I'm looking at very closely. I was looking at it today. Uh, Steve Grossman has put out numbers on how much uh, less money we would generate by not investing in you know, the BPs and, and the Gulfs and the, uh, uh, and the Exxons of the world. Um, but your idea is exactly what I want to do. See, there are $56 billion in Massachusetts, and there's about $250 billion in California Teachers Pension Fund, and there's about $157 billion in the New York uh, Nysters in the New York Teachers Fund. And you go around the states and you add up all those dollars and you pick out what's invested in fossil fuels, and I'll do all the math for you because I've already done it, it's about $125 billion. And if I can lead a coalition of state treasurers and public university endowment managers and nonprofit and foundation leaders who have big investment portfolios, and we can aggregate all of that and threaten divestment, then you will see ExxonMobil. Trump, th then you will see them react and you will see them uh, listen to us. And our message will be, if you agree with this, stop investing in fracking, stop investing in uh, oil drilling, and start getting on board with R&D in the clean energy space so that we can have better and more uh, opportunities to put that 
route our country wherever it is needed to generate clean energy for everyone. Yes, ma'am. The minimum wage? Yes. Raise the minimum wage. You got it. Yes. Yeah, oh, here's another one. I'm going to join. Have you join my team? What, what's your name? What's your name? Francis. Francis, thank you. Uh, this, this is great. So, so the challenge I've been having in talking to people up on Beacon Hill uh, about the minimum wage is uh, Francis gets it exactly right. But she's smarter than all the other people I'm talking to because they keep on saying, well, if you raise my labor costs, um, I'm going to have to lay off employees, or I'm going to have to make full-time employees part-time. No. I've studied the, the economics. In fact, I will share with anybody who wants uh, this letter that I just grabbed today. Seventy-five very prominent economists wrote to President Obama and basically said exactly what you just said, Francis. It will not lead to job cuts. It will lead to putting more people and people more money in people's pockets who will send it, who will, who will then help create more job growth and more uh, consumer spending so that ultimately the economy is going to grow. And that that is what's going to happen if we raise the minimum wage. But it's it's uh, it's an uphill battle for me. I am I am one voice trying to expand my voice to other committee members who think like me. I'm trying to get our leadership on board. It's a tough argument. Um, people just don't think about it the right way. Part of this stems from this hooey idea the Republicans have around trickle-down economics, which makes no sense at all. Yes? It's not yet. I just got it this morning. Um, but if, if you sign up with your emails, I'm, I'm Gabe uh, is with me. Uh, Gabe is back there. If you want to sign up, I'd be happy to send it to it. I literally just got it, and I don't even, don't even have it yet on my personal computer. So um, we, we'd be happy to get it to you. Yes, sir, you've been raising your hand. Back. Yeah, I was just curious. Is anybody on Beacon Hill checking to see where chemicals are stored in Massachusetts? <laughs> wow, that's, no, that's a new one. I have not. Uh, so, you know, interesting question. Who's responsible? Yes. Well, I'd like to know where it is. I Attorney assume. General, I think, uh, because this ultimately would fall under you know, business practice, bad business practices if they're not stored properly, right? And, and he or she, right now, is the chief law enforcement. Uh, so that is probably the AG's role. Yes, sir. Just going back to the question about the minimum wage. The point that you raised about economists writing the letter. Yes. So there has been evidence for years that raising the minimum wage does not cause what everybody says it does. Why? Yeah, but why can't people in the legislature, or they're just too dumb to recognize that they're wrong? <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> so I'm going to do everything I can do. So I'm, you got, I'm no, 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 you raise a very valid point. And I'll tell you what, what one of the challenges of being a legislator is that you tend to be uh, 10 miles wide and an inch deep because there are so many issues coming at you all the time. And that's why we have committees. And that's why we have committee chairs. Um, and, and our role is to dive deep into the substance and really understand it. What I am trying to do is sort of change the culture up there because in the past, all too often, you didn't get a lot of the facts and a lot of the research and the analytics and, and all that. And, and having done all that kind of work and that kind of economic analysis in management consulting and in the private sector, I, I, I really enjoy doing that stuff. Uh, and it's what I want. I think the treasurer's office is perfect for that role. If you, if you believe in return on investment as a fundamental aspect of decision making, and if you're thinking about budgets and you're thinking about income and expenditures, right, you got to think about return on investment. We do it in our households every day, right? How do I spend my time? How do I spend my resources? And every once in a while, we need to take a break and take a vacation. But you know what? We're spending a lot of, I am spending, return on investment, I'm doing it right now. i got three 17-year-olds in the Wayland High School system. Uh, they are all applying to colleges. The return on investment issue is right here. Uh, here and I'll be right in the uh, 
actually the third question that, that my, I, I asked my wife when she told me on the phone, she was you know, at the dock and she found out, she said, honey, you're not going to believe it. I said, what? She said, I'm trouble at home. She's like, how are we going to work with the boyfriends? And I'm like, no, we're going to pay for college. <laughs> well, so um, we're trying to invest. So it's exact, so, but not many people do that, right? Not many people in state government have the kind of experience that I'm bringing to the table for this role. And so I'm trying to share with all my colleagues that these fact sheets and these reports and all that kind of stuff in order to educate them so that they are uh, able to make those right decisions. Other questions? We are getting more, kicked yeah, out of yeah. here oh, right. um, yes, in would, five minutes. So I'm yes. sorry. But what I would suggest is um, if you have five more minutes and I'm folks want to stick um, yeah. just ask him some questions right outside, um, if you have two quick seconds that yes. you want to. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you.